Coming to school on a Saturday means you can do anything you want. Doesn't really mean you can do anything you want, so don't like get yourself in trouble and then say Reynolds told you to do that. But it's Saturday and I came up to school to shoot this video and get some stuff done. And my little girl's with me. She's back there on the couch. She started not feeling so well when we were on our way up here. So she's just chilling. So you might hear the secret life of pets in the background. Don't demonetize me, YouTube. I have a lot in this video. I'm gonna try and break it down into little chunks so that it's more digestible. My hair is doing this thing again. I know I talk about my hair a lot, all right? No one ever comments on this, but I realize that I talk about my hair a lot. But you know, my friend Niani from Naturally Niani said that her hair has its own zip code. And so I'm going with that. It's at least its own area code. Here's the first thing I'm thinking about. Recent comments that I've been getting, what I'm getting up to, and the new unit that I'm going to start coming up and kind of like what's been going on in class. So like those three things are my main thing. So let's get, let's jump right into this. Now I saw Philip DeFranco, but February is often the hardest time of the year for teachers, right? Depending on where you live, it's rainy, it's cold, everyone's sick, you're tired of the snow, it's lost its luster, or maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you started mid-year and you are filling in for someone. Someone's on maternity leave. You just started subbing because you got out of college. You found a job late in the year. All of this can be super overwhelming, especially I think sometimes when you're watching folks like all of us on YouTube or the folks on Instagram, it looks so easy. Everyone's so happy. But in reality, the beginning of the year, your room looked so great. You had so many great ideas on how this year was going to go. And maybe the year went left and you went right. All those fresh faces in the beginning of the year sitting in all of your classroom desks were so full of possibility. And now the mere thought of them on a Sunday evening is driving you to drink. Maybe your kids aren't listening. I feel like the parents aren't there to help. Administration just keeps making bad decision after bad decision and you're not sure what to do with that. First of all, I'd like everyone to know that I am no exception, right? My year, I thought was going to start off, 2017, 2018 was supposed to be the greatest school year ever. I was gonna will it into existence. And then because of all kinds of factors, it has kind of become, it's been a good year. It has not been at all what I dreamed it was going to be. You know, and that has to do with like changes in staff, changes in students. Some kids moved into other classes. Other kids move into your class and kind of disrupt that flow of what's going on in there. Some dudes have issues that you didn't see coming and now you're trying to help them figure out the best way for them to succeed this year. Students have had their own stuff going in their lives. I've had a lot of kids lose somebody this year and when that happens, it kind of puts everything else, everything comes screeching to a halt and you can't, and you're trying to figure out like, how do I teach this book when this child has all of this enormous stuff going on in their lives? The reality of it is, it's always gonna be that way. I think some teachers have this idea that like, it's all gonna be perfect one day or like, if you can just figure everything out, then it'll all be all right, but it's not. Teaching has so much less to do with just showing up and getting things done than it does with thinking on the fly, with moving on the fly, with trying to figure all this madness out as it's going. Sometimes it's a lot more like trying to herd kittens that have been drugged. And so I've gotten a lot of comments in the last month or two from those of you that say like just watching certain videos on YouTube, sometimes my videos, sometimes other people's videos, really give you the confidence to keep going, right? That they make you feel better on a, on a rough day. And so on this, rainy February day where my kid is sick on the couch, where I had four hours of sleep last night because I couldn't find the Tylenol and I had a sore throat, I had to eat mint chocolate chip ice cream in the middle of the night. I wanna, I wanna take a second to do that, right? And just say, you can do it. It's February, the year's half over. How are you going to finish this year? You can either dig in deep or you can just quit now, but you don't want to. That's not why you signed up for this job. That's not why you got into this profession. You got into it to help kids and to teach them. The kids don't want to be here either. It's February. It's not cool anymore. People are pissing them off or they've been bullied or their new school clothes don't look that new anymore or they're just tired of geometry. Cause no one, not no one, like geometry teachers like geometry. Everyone loves literature. So maybe instead of February sucking, you make it the greatest month of the year. Or 
Plan for March. Start planning now. Put things in place for March to be the greatest month of your school year. Have a cereal day where you eat cereal with the least nutritional value, except for those kids with allergies. They can eat something else. Bring them in something that doesn't look like cereal for kids that have allergies, because then that just makes them feel terrible. Maybe have some sort of like mid-year award ceremony. You can go get these little, th these things. Keep all my weird stuff in a suitcase marked weird stuff. I have another one back there that says weirder stuff. You can go to the dollar store and get these little medals, right? All it says is winner on it. Kids love these things. Print out awards, give them money. Print out all this fake money and then I hand it out in the hallway when kids are doing a good job or when I see them do something nice. Or if you want to be real weird, print out money with your own face on it, bam. But doing those sorts of awards acknowledges kids that maybe have fallen by the wayside. Those number two kids, right? The kids that are like flying under the radar that have been trying to do a good job or the kids that are struggling super hard but they've had mad grit this year and they've been trying to push through whatever nonsense is going on outside of school or the kid that's bothering them that sits behind them. So having those sorts of awards can just give you that little boost in the middle of the year. Maybe focus on one kid on Monday. Rafe Esquith wrote this really great book called Teach Like Your Hair Is On Fire. In the book he tells this story about how he wanted to help this one little girl with a science project and the science project was not going great and the other kids were doing whatever the other kids were doing. I, I think we had, he had to set a candle at the bottom of this project so that it would boil something on top and whatever. Point of the matter is, is that he was trying so hard, he was focusing so hard that his hair actually caught on fire as he was trying to do it because he was so committed to this one child. Maybe on Monday, you find that one kid that doesn't get it, the kid that's really been struggling, the kid that's having a hard time and that just can't focus, and you just hyper-focus in on them. Now, that doesn't mean let the rest of your class like run wild. Give that student that thing they need and try and help them to raise up, and that could be a really great moment for you and for them. Ask your staff to go out for drinks on Friday night. Have them over to your house if you don't have a babysitter like me. Have drinks there. Hello? You know, you think you're here alone on Saturday, and then next thing you know, someone pops in your door and scares the crap out of you. It's dark in the hallway. Mr. Alam, not nice. Anyway, where was I? Go to Target. Go to Old Navy. Teachers love that. It's all over Instagram. And hit that sales rack and get a couple new items for yourself so you can freshen up your look. Maybe take a day, maybe with your students, maybe after school on a Saturday. Come in and like freshen up your room. Wipe off those desks. Put some new tape on your floor. I like tape on my floor because it keeps my desks in line. Whatever that thing is, going in and removing some of that junk, moving things around, freshening things up, just makes you feel better. Maybe take the focus off yourself and go find that new teacher that's really having a hard time or is not really sure that you haven't checked in with for a while and make sure they're okay too. But more than anything, you can just decide that's gonna be awesome. Get it into your head so that when you start doing these things, what you're doing is building momentum. Momentum is everything. In the beginning of the year, you have your new clothes, your classroom's looking fresh, you have new supplies, you have new kids in those desks, and that all builds momentum, and then that makes the beginning of the year so great. So why not in the middle of the year, build that momentum again? Take a weekend, put the work in, make that next lesson great, make that next kid's day special. Do something that's going to make this the beginning of the rest of the year. All right, a couple of things going on in class. So. This is a weird week. I'll be in Colorado, speaking in Colorado on Friday, flying out Thursday. If you live in the Colorado area, a lot of people have said they're gonna go. I'm still nervous. It's gonna be me, my wife, and Franklin in that room. Please show up, bring your friends, bring other teachers, bring your neighbor. I'm really good with grandmoms. It would mean the world to me if you did that. So it's sort of a short week, but we're ending some things and starting some things. The sophomores are gonna continue to read the book Night. We've been reading Night, we've been using small groups. That has looked like this. I got the school to gift me, I, I talked a little bit about this in last week's video, but to give me books for Night so the kids can have their own books and they can learn how to annotate it. We're marking three things in there. Either character development, so students are either have either been assigned 
Ellie or they've been assigned, we're calling it the community, which is just everyone else in the book. And then you don't have to do this just for night. You can do this with any book. But what they're doing is noting changes in there, underlining them or putting a little bracket around what the change is or when it happens and then writing a CH on the side, meaning that, that their character has developed. They're also noting aha moments where like something, there's an epiphany, something finally is understood in the book. And then they're noting any hard decisions and marking, marking those with an HD, right? Aha gets marked with an aha. And then we're, what we're doing is charting the growth of the characters and of the how the decisions get tougher and tougher as we're reading. And then at the end, during the test, they're going to have to be able to pull things from the book. It'll be open book test. And they'll be able to take that proof and all of those things they've marked along the way in the book and use it in their essay. We've also started talking about human dignity in, t in terms of this book night. And so we started watching the beginning of Shawshank Redemption last week where I showed them just the beginning of that when Andy Dufresne is going to prison and how his dignity is immediately stripped from him. Because of that, I got this idea that we should go somewhere like that. So we're going to visit this place called Eastern State Penitentiary at the beginning of March to take the boys into this prison to get a sense of like what it would feel like to go from being a free person to being an inmate somewhere to having your your clothes or your hair or your freedom all stripped away from you and then that what that would feel like. So that's something for us to look forward to also going on this trip. The reading groups have been going well. We're still trying to figure out volume levels so I'm not really sure how we're going to handle that but because there's not a whole lot of open spaces in our school like every single little space is used for something even the back stairwell or the vestibule in the front of the school like it's it's hard to figure that out so we're we're constantly trying to reimagine and come up with new ideas on how to best get the kids a, a quiet space where they can actually pay attention and then freshmen are going to start of mice and men and so Joel Smith from Melbourne Australia this one's for you. Joel just emailed me, sent me a message last night or something that he's working on of Mice and Men 2. Here's a couple of ways that I do that. And I've talked about this in, in past vlogs, but if you're new, then this is how I do it. First, the book. John Sandbeck's original version of, of Mice and Men. And then he wrote a screenplay for this also, or a play thing script. Here's the beauty in that. Reading the book has a lot of flowery language. I love John Steinbeck. I've read most of his books. But when you're dealing with certain students, especially kids who read on a lower reading level, all that flowery language, all it's doing is distracting them or making them do this. And they don't know what's actually going on in the story. So reading as a play does two things. One, it strips a lot of that away so that you're not focusing on how green the leaves are and how blue the sky is. You're focusing on the characters and allowing each person to read really helps also. An experiment I'm gonna try with this book in one class because it's small enough is we're going to read in a circle so that every day it's easier for me to move around to tell kids how to read, when to read, with what kind of enthusiasm to read with. And then I'm gonna bring in, I have music set to this book. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've put music to certain parts because sometimes when you read and you play music behind what the kids are reading, it really, really can get kids into a part they'll feel the sadness a little bit more. They'll get a little bit more excited. The funny part will little, be a little bit funnier. That can just make it a little bit more of a dynamic reading experience than just reading in class. And like I said before, reading in February is, it's just boring sometimes. To put that fresh new edge on it, it's worth trying. Remember, if you have a crazy idea, if you wanna try something new, just remember, what's the worst thing that can happen? You're not gonna catch on fire. So what if the kids don't like it? Then get rid of it, try something new, but let them know, look, I'm trying this for you. I'm trying to come up with fresh, bold new ideas for you because otherwise it's all boring to us. So some will win and some will lose, but like if you don't try them, you'll get stuck in that rut of just trying to play to the students or just like giving up also. For of Mice and Men, we're gonna talk a lot more about characterization. Again, with certain readers, especially kids who read on a lower level. You have to keep looping around, keep talking about the same things over and over again all year to really embed it, to really get them to grasp those ideas. Not much else is going to change for this. We're gonna do journal entries, we're going to do vocabulary, we're going to chart the growth and change in characters, 
and then use journal entries to bring this stuff to life, to connect it to their lives. And then have talks about some of the deeper themes. I have an idea of a class trip for this. Not sure if it's gonna work out yet because it's still pretty cold here in Philadelphia and rainy and miserable and crappy outside, but we'll see if that works out. I have this idea of maybe going to a farm for the day. Most of my guys have never been to a farm and like, seeing what that experience is like, just as a way to give them some more base knowledge on what's happening in the book. Too many times, kids are forced to read about things like a jungle or a coral reef or the woods. And if you've never been there, it doesn't make sense to you. But if you've been somewhere like the setting of the book, it takes on a new a new life for you. And it you can actually connect it to something that you've already been through, something you've already witnessed, something you've already seen with your own eyes. Before I go, a couple of other things that are going on. One, I started an Amazon shop just because people ask me things like, where do I get the pens that I use? Where do I get the hair stuff that makes my hair look like beaker? What kind of camera equipment do I use? I get a lot of those sorts of questions. I, everything from book lists, like what my kids are reading, what I'm reading, the stuff I'm using in class. I made an Amazon shop. I do get a kickback from that. I don't know how many pennies I get, but I really just made it so that there was a concentrated area of all the things I'm using. Feel free to use the link, it's below. If not, you can just go buy it on your own, but you can see where all those things exist. Again, I'm not doing it for money, I'm just doing it to try and like add one more resource to the folks that ask those questions. Two, if you don't already, check me out on Instagram. My Instagram stories have a little bit more of like what's happening day to day in the classroom. To be transparent, I'm not allowed to film during class anymore this year, so I'm trying to work around that, like filming before school, after school, stuff like that. For right now, that is the situation. So, but on Instagram, Instagram, you can see a little bit more of that stuff, pictures of the day, follow my stories, all that stuff. It's just Real Rap with Reynolds on Instagram. And I think that's it. Everybody, thanks so much for watching all the time. If there's any or anything I can help you with, please shoot me an email, leave a comment below. I'd love to help you out. And if you live in Colorado, please, please come to my talk. All right, guys, hope you have the greatest rest of the year ever. Have a great week. Peace. Oh yeah, I forgot. The Eagles won the Super Bowl. That happened this week too. We missed the day of school because we got to go to the parade. Where are we, bro? We're at Philly. <laughs> to do what? Watch the Eagles pray. Yes. Are we short? Yeah. I hope it's high. Eagles prayed. It's madness out here. It's super 2018. fun. 2018. I cannot 2001. see anything. You cannot see anything? Well, good thing I, good thing I brought my shoulders. All right.